Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sunday Run podcast. Super excited today. We are going to learn how to breathe. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. We had a ripping episode last week, and this is going to be another ripping one. I'm with Ella Pike, the breath boss. Hello. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm very happy to be here. Fantastic. Thank you for coming on. Have you done podcasts before? Yeah, this is. I do a lot of podcasts now, actually. I've seen. Yeah. Um, this is like your number five, I think, or six. Oh, so you're a professional at it. It's actually quite cool when you type in um, Ella Pike to Spotify. I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> here I there? am. Yeah, here I am. It's fair enough. I've seen you do some like TV interviews as well. Mm. It's getting, we're getting our name out there. Wow, that's, yeah. that's Empowering awesome. Empowering everyone with breathing. So you're part of like, you're a creator and founder of The Breath House. Yep. And that's kind of how I found out uh, about you through like Nathan Freeman as well. Uh, you guys are doing incredible stuff there. Yep. What, what is The Breath House and how long has it been going for? So The Breath House was one month on Sunday. And mm. we came up with this idea, I think about eight months, nine months ago now. And if anyone knows Nathan, he moves really fast and really quick. And he was kind of like the, the masculine energy that I needed in my life. So mm-hmm. he has opened my dream studio and he is running performance style classes for like athletes. Um, and I'm running the rest of the breath classes. And then we have a few teachers who facilitate yin yoga, which is another very gentle, still delicious experience that has you focusing on your breath. And... Yeah, we are in Windsor, just off Chapel. We are a basement studio. It's like a full sensory experience. You get out of the lift, it's the vibes are set and they are immaculate. And we are just there to show you how powerful you are. It's incredible. Breath is not something I've ever really focused on personally. Like I've probably disregarded it a lot. How did you originally get into doing breath work? Um, so I thought it was bullshit. I yeah, laughed at it. The whole I. idea of every, like just every element of it. I was like, shut up. I breathe all day, every day. Like I don't need this shit. And I was super resistant towards my first session. And I had like a, a, I had a very, I was a hot mess to be completely honest with you. I was an absolute hot mess. And I was like nearly a hundred kilos. I was smoking a lot of weed, drinking a lot of alcohol, doing all of the things to just like numb and suppress myself. And then I had a full Britney Spears moment, which made me realize what was going on in my life. And then about six months after that, I was finding myself in the same patterns again. And someone suggested breath work and I was like, shut up, you don't get it. I don't need it. And another person then suggested it to me and I was like, screw it, I'll try it once. And it was when we just started to go into lockdown and I went through a breakup and I was like, fuck it, let's go. And I logged onto a Zoom. So I had my first experience on Zoom. And it was a group Zoom and everyone was like, it was, there was like maybe 70 people on it. It was a woman in America running it. And she was explaining everything that I now explain a hundred times a week. And I was thinking, you sound crazy, babe. Like (laughs) we're going to breathe. We're not going to have all these things happen in our body. And then I don't know if it's because I surrendered completely or if it's because I was so skeptical or if it was because I needed it so desperately, but I lied down and it was the exact thing that I had searched for since I I guess started running from my emotions by like smoking and partying and Mm. eating everything inside. Um, And it was just like this, it was, people say like you come home to yourself and there's like these coming home to yourself moments. And I was always like, all right, babe. And I had that moment, I was like laying on my bed and (laughs) it felt like all of the things that I'd searched for my entire life had just been handed to me and it was just me breathing. And from that exact moment, I was like, okay, let's go. These, these crazy people know what they're talking about. The crazy people know what they're talking about. It was a bit the same. I mean, I've only done a couple of classes, but, I, you know, like Nathan was like, I think you were as well. Like, I know it sounds crazy. Yeah. Like, it sounds so airy-fairy. And I'm like, yeah, righto. Like, I've never really meditated either. Like, I don't know if I'm going to get into the, to this. And, like, the class I did was, was awesome. That's, you know, class is following it. Are you able to kind of explain like what breath work is essentially, you know, like as yeah. a breakdown, pretend my grandma's listening um, and she'd have no idea. Yeah. So obviously my granddad for like starters, my, I call my granddad and like have catch ups with him and he forgets that I've told him this a hundred times, but he's like, what are you doing with your days? And I'm like, I, I tell people how to breathe now. And he goes, people pay you to teach them how to breathe. I'm like, yeah. And he just <laughs> thinks it's the best joke that I tell him every 10 days when we speak. He just, uh, yeah. He's hysterically laughing about it. But um, basically obviously like we breathe nonstop and we don't ever have to pay any attention to it, but it's this tool that we've been gifted that actually controls our nervous system. And there's so many ways that you can change the way that you breathe to invoke a different response from your body. So basically breath work, I guess, 
is what we do all day, every day, but like putting intention behind it and being like, I'm lying down to, you know, change my state by taking some different breaths. It's just breath play. It's just lying down and I guess you can lie down to relax yourself and like extend your breath in and extend your breath out and breathe through your nose and then you can breathe in and out of your mouth and you can have like a more heightened, I guess, sympathetic response from your body and it can be more of a charge up and more of a like, whoa, what's going on for me right now and more of a high feeling. And then you can have, there's so many different things that you can do with it, but it's increasing your stress response sometimes when you breathe. It's um, alkalining your blood by doing breath holds and like changing the chemistry of your blood. It is, it's relaxing you. It's slowing down your heart rate. It's improving your digestive system. It's telling your body that you're safe. Like there's no, there's a hundred million benefits to breath work. It's just understanding that it's a tool and it's not this hoo-ha thing. The incredible thing about like the breath work classes as well, what I've found is like, I've, I've had two where it's worked really well for me and one where it's like I just couldn't quite get into it. I think I had too much going on, like I didn't mm-hmm. completely switch off. Mm-hmm. But even just having the option to like lie down and have someone tell you how to breathe, mm-hmm. like you, you just get all this time to yourself and say, oh, I didn't realise I needed that hour this mm-hmm. week. My favourite thing is when people come in and they're like, this is my first time and, you know, they... I guess there's a bit of scepticism to it because all we do is breathe and it's like, why am I going to go pay someone to like tell me how to breathe? But you lie down and it's like you do, you stop and you're just having a conversation with your body and, you know, there's like a spiritual side of it. There's like a performance side of it where like we do footy teams and we Nathan runs them all through like visualizations in the breath hold because you're so like in touch with yourself and you're just so still and you're holding your breath for sometimes like two minutes these boys do or three minutes and he's having them like visualize things and a lot of them are performing like immaculately after that like ridiculously well um and then there's just the stillness side of it where you're just having a conversation with yourself and being present and not being distracted and you know you're there's hoo-ha but you're magic like we're magical Mm -hmm. and we're so much more powerful than we've been led to believe and when you just lay and you breathe and you just surrender to the experience that your body wants to give you when you've stopped it's so healing Mm. it's so healing I I don't want to give away completely like what a breathwork class is but in in general like I love the you've you've got the bowls which you like hit and they kind of ding the sound bowls and then in between kind of like breaths or like like um like sections of the breath. rounds of breathing yeah yeah rounds of breathing you do some music as well yeah. it's like some pump up music often there's like sadder music it is the most incredible experience like i couldn't recommend it enough even if you just want to have a good time like for getting down one of my favorite things is when people are like i didn't expect you to like play jay-z and i wasn't expecting yeah. like 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 why was jay Fred cole again. on yeah, yeah, Fred yeah. Again. they're like i was expecting it just to be like all ch- like sound bowls and like chimes and like rain yeah. noises and i was like no that's the story you're telling yourself <laughs> Oh, like my play, I, yeah, my playlist are my favorite part. It's funny you get through one of the the breath holds or whatever, and then you like feeling a bit high, and then like Fred again, you know, I found you comes yeah. on. You're like, oh my god, I feel like <laughs> where I'm, am I? Where, where am I? <laughs> well, this is why I loved it so much because I had chased so many highs my whole life, and then I laid down and did that first session, and that first session wasn't like class, like it was a breakthrough session. It was mm. extremely uncomfortable in moments, but I'd never sat in those uncomfortable moments. I'd always like they're too hard for me, and I felt so boss after. But then after I did that first session and I felt all those things in my body, I was like, hold on, okay, I'll try other ways of doing this. And I became addicted to doing the Wim Hof method. Like I'm talking proper addicted in lockdown. I spent hours doing it a day, like addicted to breath work. And it was because I was feeling high and I had been like, my Britney Spears moment had been me addicted to Xanax, right? So addicted to feeling that like numb, floaty feeling. And then All of my years before that, it was always sleeping tablets and Valiums and then like weed and sending it the hardest on the weekend. And it's like all of those things that I'd looked for, I was doing on the floor in my house with breathing Mm. and Wim Hof. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's like that you feel so high. Yeah, and you literally do. It's just you. It's insane. It's like legal weed. Exactly. Um, How how was your your first class of teaching it? Like, what was that like? And and did you have like a mentor that someone helped you through with it? So this really funny thing happened where I had an old business partner and we were going to open a wellness center, and lockdown happened, and all of a sudden we couldn't open this wellness center. But so we decided to start a community and it was a beach community and it was the cold water ther- like we were starting this community for the cold water therapy element of it to like start building community because we love community um and we started having people meet up on the beach to get into the ocean and then I was like okay I'm gonna start practicing sound like breath work on people that come before so I would invite my friends and I would shake uncontrollably being like 
okay, take a deep breath in. And I would follow the Wim Hof app. So I would have the Wim Hof method app up Mm -hmm. and I wasn't trained in him. I've never been trained in Wim Hof, but I just was like, before I was a facilitator, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to run my friends through it and get comfortable with facilitating breath work, right? And I would just like, literally he would guide, I would wear earphones and I would repeat what he was saying as he was doing it. And it was just my friends and then it started growing and then I became qualified in a different style of breath work. And then all of a sudden these people were meeting us at the beach for the breath uh, for the cold water element of it and then they were like what's this happening before and then we just said okay fuck it like I'll run breath work so once I did my certification um we just started posting that you could come half an hour earlier and do breath work and that community grew really fast so I just was put in front of 150 people on a Sunday morning all of a sudden and then I used to be in a run club and the run club was we'd have names and I used to do lashes so I was the lash boss and then I was like no I don't want to be the lash boss anymore so they started calling me the breath boss breath boss and then I just no one had that URL and no one had that insta name and I was like I'm the breath boss <laughs> like, such a good name and then I just got put in front of all these people and was the breath boss all of a sudden so I actually just happened to be put in front of all these people and just get this name for myself really fast and then when I started doing paid classes I shook uncontrollably <laughs> a bit more throughout the here. whole, yeah, I was like, oh my God, people are paying me to come. And like my first like two months of classes when I did them in that studio that you first came in, that one in Middle Park, mm. I just, I couldn't even, I hardly spoke. I had, I had to have like a sip of water, everything. So I was so nervous and my imposter syndrome was so hectic. And so it was really uncomfortable for me, but now it just feels like, yeah, now oh, I love it. It's I so nice it. in the class. You just take full control. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Talk us through some of the, um, like different styles of breathing and what they can do. I, I've been told, you know, like calming your body down in through the nose. Yeah. Like that works. So there's so many different ways. So like my favorite to let people know about is box breathing, which is something that I guess is the most common, I would say, breath work that people do. Like a doctor will prescribe you box breathing now because like we're slowly moving into this age of breathing being a thing. But box breathing is just breathing in through the nose for the count of four, holding for four, letting it go for four and holding on the exhale for four. And that's one of the fastest ways to just calm your nervous system down. And you can do that. I suggest for people to do that for like one song, Mm -hmm. if they're feeling overwhelmed, to just sit down and give themselves that one song of not being distracted. And I can guarantee that if you're doing it in through the nose, into your belly, you will feel amazing after. And then there's breakthrough breath work, which is the one that changed my life. Mm -hmm. And it's uncomfortable like it's not it's not fun the whole time but it's basically what we're doing with that is you're setting an intention and then you're going into continuous nose breathing which is just like grounding you in and like stopping your monkey mind and then we open the mouth and we start activating our sympathetic nervous system and we do that in a controlled way so there's that saying what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and they're talking about hermetic stress so like small amounts of controlled stress that you put your body under to evolve into the stress right so that's what happens when you has a, that's what happens when you have an ice bath and that's what happens in a breakthrough breathwork session you like put yourself into this stressed state to i guess go back to the times when you haven't granted your body permission to go there before like in a an emotional way mm. and you just allow your body to go and to lean back into things that it hasn't before and that's the most transformative style. And then there's like the class style, which is super ventilation, which is just charging your body up and expelling all the carbon dioxide um, to then sit in a breath hold and sit with the flood of oxygen in your body, which is Mm. alkalining your blood and reducing your inflammation and increasing your stress response and increasing your cardiovascular system, um, like your tolerance to needing to take breaths and stuff like that. Mm. And then there's like breathing in for the count of four and extending your exhale for six or eight and that's always going to calm your nervous system down and then there's like fire breath which is like a two minute breath exercise you can do in the morning that's in through the nose out of the mouth and again a charge up like there's so many different things yeah i I could i could literally talk about this part just for 45 minutes yeah we got we got plenty of time hey what about for you like from a day-to-day perspective are you like waking up and thinking about your breathing like are you doing specific things along the way so Unless it's a Tuesday morning when I have a class at 6 a.m., I don't do anything before. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I keep my phone on airplane mode until I have done my fire breath and a cold shower. So fire breath every day, first thing, and cold shower. That's my everyday non-negotiable. But for me, because I became so obsessed with breath work um, in 2020 and the end of 2019 and 2020, I really trained myself to take a deep breath when I'm feeling overwhelmed and I'm chaos like I have a chaos energy but it's so much more controlled now than it used to be because 
I know when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I just need to sit and just go, and just like take five deep breaths and I bring myself back into my body. So I don't practice breath work as much as I should anymore, like sitting down for like half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, but I do start my day every day with that controlled stress. Mm. And then I also am very good now at just stopping when I'm feeling like I'm not present and just going, okay, two minutes of deep breathing and you're back. It's pretty common. Like the second someone makes a, a, it like part of the career and, and so on is kind of losing, not necessarily the passion behind it, but like, have you found you haven't allowed yourself enough time to actually do your own breath work classes for yourself? Because during the class, like when you're teaching me how to do breath work, it's like, you're not actually doing the breathing, like you're talking people through it. Yeah, so I get my friends to sit down behind me and if I need, because I'm not going to run myself through a breakthrough breathwork session, right? Like the big one, but that's my favorite one to do because I get the most out of that. Like I have the most creative downloads and I, I shed the most like negative, I guess, limiting beliefs in those moments. So I get my friends now to just sit behind me and I run myself through it, but they're just there so that I don't get up after 10 minutes and go, I don't need to do this right now. You know, like they're there to be like, no, you're lying down for this time. Um, But I probably since opening Breath House, since February when we got the keys and it all started, I haven't done as many big sessions as I would like to, but now we're getting structure. So I'm going to start like actually allocating Mondays as my day off from next week. Um, And so I will start doing some more stuff for me and less like, yeah, more like just sit down and run breath work for myself. Mm. It's a pretty cool, like holistic perspective of health the the breath work and all of that you mentioned ice baths or like cold showers Mm -hmm. do they kind of go hand in hand with the breath work i think so yes yeah i think so because it's training your stress response and like you don't think about anything else in an ice bath you're just thinking about being in the ice bath and you don't think about anything else when you're doing breath or you do but you come back to your breath each time and it's like just being present Mm -hmm. so for me that under this the controlled state of stress like my favorite thing to remind people of is when they say like ice baths are too hard or cold showers are too hard or i'm crazy for swimming in the water in winter in melbourne is it's like if you're a person who's telling yourself a story that you're stressed okay so you're like a stressful person you're one of those people who's like like you know and you are also telling yourself the story that a cold shower is too much for you or an ice bath is too much for you it's like, of course you're stressed. Mm. You, you can't go into your animal instincts for that minute in a cold shower and handle that stress to improve your life. Of course you're going to feel stressed. Like mm. If you can't handle that one minute of controlled stress, how does your nervous system know that you're okay in stress? Mm. As soon as something stressful happens, you're going to go, <gasps> you know? But after like 10 days of having those cold showers, you notice that stuff doesn't feel as stressful. And you almost like... Like you almost need it to be as stressful at the start to get the benefits, don't you? Like the I've found with I've done a couple of ice baths now, two actually, and like first and second, the, the second one is so much better. But the beauty of it is you can only think about being in the ice mm-hmm. bath. Like you're not thinking about the stresses of life. Mm-hmm. Like you're not worried about you know accounting or anything like that. Like you are just trying to think about living and surviving, or your body's trying to get you out of that that spot. But I found like for me it was it was the breath work in that in the ice bath, like breathe through it, slow your breathing down and slowly get through. Mm -hmm. And another thing is when, like you hop into an ice bath, right? And the first time it sucks, the second time it sucks, the third time it starts to get better because what you're doing as well is, you know how babies are born and they're really fat? And they're just like, they just come out and they're just like, so you just want to squeeze mm, them, right? Marshmallows. Yeah. And then yeah. you see kids playing in the water in Saint Kil- at St. Kilda in the middle of winter and mm. they're just not bothered by it. So we're born, like we're animals, right? And we're born covered in a fat called brown fat. And our brown fat is like our insulation and it's like what keeps us warm, right? So that's why kids can be out in the cold because they're activating their brown fat and they're still honoring that brown fat. But brown fat is like muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it. Mm. So as adults, we're like, don't get cold, you'll catch a cold. Now our parents don't understand this. So they're always like warming us up and we're always, we're never cold because Mm. if we're cold, we'll catch a cold, right? So we don't, have as much brown fat as we should have because we don't ever honor it and we never stay cold. But when you continuously put yourself into the cold and you stay with being cold, not like all the time, so you do get sick, but like in controlled states, you're reactivating that fat. And it's not fat that you see, it's the fat Mm. that surrounds your your organs and it's the fat that's like your... um, your insulation, insulation yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and you actually reactivate it when you continuously do it mm. so like i don't find i still hate getting into the ocean like nathan and i went for a swim this morning he's better he was better at it than i was today but like i still find it uncomfortable but then within one like 
30 seconds, say. I want to say one second, but that's mayo. It's 30 seconds. I'm relaxed into it and I'm loving it again mm. because it's like my body's like, oh, cool, we like this. This is good. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's so worth it. Yes. It's so worth, so worth it for the, for the mental. And also, like, it's increasing your metabolism. It's like, it's doing so many other things. It's not mm. just you pump your body with feel good hormones. You are increasing your metabolism for a certain amount of time after. You're like, it's just, it's magic. Mm, it is magic. I wanted to get into like kind of breath work and applying to the everyday life. Um, sleeping? Yeah. Breath work for so, people who are struggling to get to sleep or? So, breath work to sleep is. This is this was my biggest lesson, and I still struggle with this sometimes, was training myself to be present with my breath and keep coming back to breathing when I get distracted. So for sleep, I always just lay in bed and do in for four, out for six, and every time I leave and I come back, like I not leave, you know what I mean? Like I go elsewhere and I'm not focusing on my breath, I come back to it, and that has helped me a lot. But mouth taping... Here we go. Has helped me stay asleep. So I, like I said, used to take sleeping tablets and all that kind of stuff. And I used to tell my story that I needed all that to, to be able to sleep. And then I had my moment and I looked into breath work. And then I read this book, Breath by James Nestor. And the day that I got that book, I think I read it in like a day and a half. Anyway, that day I taped my mouth for the first time because he suggested it. And he's like, when you tape your mouth, you stick to nose breathing all throughout the night. And nose breathing is a parasympathetic response. So you're staying in a deeper sleep. You are breathing, so you're not snoring because you're not opening your mouth. You're not, your body's not going into a stressed out state. So when you lie down, and so many people are like, I don't need to mouth tape because I nose breathe all throughout the night because they lie down and they fall asleep with their mouth shut, right? Yeah, yeah. But you don't know what's happening when you're asleep, mate. Like no. you don't actually know Silly that goose. you roll over. Yeah. And you open your mouth and you might need to get up and go to the toilet three times in the night, right? One, because your body's pushing through, like you're more dehydrated because you're mouth breathing. But two, because you can only be in one state at a time, a parasympathetic or a sympathetic. So you lie down, you close your mouth and you fall asleep. You roll over, you open your mouth, you start, your body starts going, okay, we're going to pump some blood to your legs. We're going to pump some blood to your arms. We don't know that there's not a tiger in the room, mm. right? And then something, you hear a noise and you wake up and you're like, oh, i got to go to the toilet. I said, that's why I woke up, you know? Mm. But it's like, no, you just woke up because you're in such a light sleep because your body's on edge because you're about to be under attack. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. We don't know. Our nervous systems don't know that it's... Uh, we're just mouth breathing and for it's not sure. there's a threat. So, so how would that look like for someone getting into it, tape, taping their mouth? So go to the chemist. Do not tell them that you're going to tape your mouth because they will think you're crazy and get the pharmacist to try and talk you out of it. First, <laughs> I would, Yeah, first I would say <laughs> there's a book called um, Breath by James Nestor, which explains it really well, but also there's a TED Talk um, called Shut Your Mouth, Change Your Life by Patrick McEwan that's going to give you like black and white exactly why you need to do it. But basically you want to go to the chemist and you want to get yourself micropore tape. And you need to first understand that if your body wants to take it off in the middle of the night, you will take it off. I can promise you with my whole entire life that you will not suffocate yourself because so many people are like, you're crazy. Yeah. Um, but you'll take it off. But what you're going to start by doing is I always suggest for people who are starting to put it on their mouth just for like 20 minutes before bed and just get used to having it on and just see how it feels. And then with time, just when you feel comfortable, just try it with on for the whole night and know that you'll take it off. But know that you'll also wake up in the morning without bad breath. Oh, really? You'll have had a more restful sleep. Yeah, because when you open your mouth, you start mouth breathing and then that's why you get bad breath. You don't get bad breath when you <laughs> mouth tape. You also don't get as many cavities in your teeth because your mouth isn't getting dehydrated. Really? Yeah, so your teeth aren't drying out. It's crazy. It's so magic. Um, it's a fix to every problem. It is the mouth fix tape. to so many problems. <laughs> um, but basically, yeah, you just want to try putting it on your mouth for half an hour before bed or if you feel comfortable an hour before bed and then... Just pop it on. And if you want to start by putting a little bit across there, like that, so you still could go and force yeah, air so in, if that makes you feel mouth. better, yep. you could do that. I just cover my face. Like, I just go straight across yep. like that. But if you feel more comfortable doing it that way, just try that way. Mm. And just, like, play with it and see how easy it is for your body to take off. And I've woken up before congested and had it take, I've taken it off in my sleep and woken up having mouth, been mouth breathing. Mm. So, like, you're going to take it off. You're not going... If it's duct tape or, like... I don't know, that really strong tape, probably don't suggest that. Don't use that. <laughs> don't try that because I can't not. like guarantee that's not going to do it. Yeah. But um, yeah, you, you will not die is yeah. the one thing that I want to tell people. <laughs> what about, like, if you're, you were a pro at breath work, like what does life look like for you? You know, let's say you Wim Hof or something. Is it working through situations? Is it stress just, throughout the day? I think you're just happier. 
Mm. I think you're just happier and you just don't get stressed because you realize that your breath is magical and you can just come back to taking a deep breath and mm. like you're in your body more often and you're not like shallow chest breathing. I don't think there's like a, I mean, yes, Wim Hof could be considered a pro, but really what Wim Hof has just done is found an ancient practice. The Wim Hof method is just the Tumo method, which is like this, I think Tumo was a, from the Himalayas way, way, way before Wim Hof time. And Wim Hof has just brought light to his practice and called it the Wim Hof method because mm. he's managed to get in there and it's changed his life, right? But I think that it's not necessarily a pro. If you're a pro at breathing, you're just a pro at being in your body and being present mm. and like a pro at understanding when you're starting to feel scattered and just coming back to taking deep breaths, mm. you know? And like maybe you probably have a high, you, if you're a better if you're better at doing breath holds, maybe like you've got a higher tolerance to carbon dioxide in your body, mm. which means you'll be better at like sport and like running yep. and all that kind of stuff. And also you'll be able to hold your breath for longer because your body doesn't need to take as many breaths per minute. Um, so you're, yeah. So I don't think, I don't necessarily think that there's a, um, there's professional or not yeah, professional. Yeah, it's not like it's a just like, it's black just and about, white, yeah. Yeah, it's just about being, understanding that it's a tool and understanding that you're going to feel different if you're sitting there going, and if you're only breathing in, like if you're stressed and you're overwhelmed and you're sitting at your desk all day, just going like this and just breathing into your chest, you're not going to feel good. Mm. But like, I guess being a good breather is just understanding that you need to breathe into your belly and through your nose. And if you extend your exhale, you're going to feel more relaxed. If you shorten your exhale, you're going to feel more heightened. Like mm. just like understanding how to use your tool. I'd say one of like the, the, the biggest questions I get asked in regards to running has to do with breathing. And mm -hmm. it's, I totally get it because especially when you're just starting out at running, you can actually feel quite claustrophobic with running. It's like you're, you feel really pent up. You can't always like get to the breath. Do you have any like ways we can apply this to running? Mm -hmm. So my favorite thing to test myself with, and this was really painful the first time I did it because I didn't understand how different it was going to feel in my body, is to run your max only nose breathing. And I don't mean in through the nose, out of the mouth. I mean in and out of the nose, which oh, is God. so difficult, like so difficult. The first time I ever did it, I did it with one of my friends who has a super high tolerance to carbon dioxide and has a really big nose. Cause like, look how little my nose is. Yeah, my nose you can't is get tiny. much air through I can't there. get much air in there yeah. regardless. So not much is going on. So I need to wear a nasal strip. I didn't do that the first time. Mm. And I ran with my friend Josh and he's like, got like Maori backgrounds. He's got a, like a bigger nose and mm. has a way, he's a, he's a machine at life. And he was like, yeah, let's go for a nose breathing only run. So we had water in our mouths and we ran two Ks and it was like a, oh it was like a five. Water in your mouth. We had kept water in our mouth the whole time. <laughs> so we couldn't open our mouths and we ran two Ks and I was like, I got my ego involved and I was like, I can keep up with Josh. And so he was running it. I don't know, he was running slowly for him and mm. I was running at his pace, which was fast for me. Mm. And as soon as we stopped and I started mouth breathing, I got my first ever migraine. I got a hypoxic headache because my body was so out of balance and the chemistry was so not going on. And I was like on the floor thinking that someone was drilling my head open. So then I didn't <laughs> do that. Fun. Yeah, so don't try that. So don't try and go hard straight away. Go super slowly. What I would suggest if you wanted to start like improving your tolerance to carbon dioxide, which is the thing in your body that tells your body you need to breathe, I would start by running as slowly as you can, mm. just nose breathing and just see how that feels. And like just understanding that that run isn't for performance, that run isn't for whatever else it is. It's just to see how it feels nose breathing and just put water in your mouth or tape your mouth, look mm. like an absolute nutter, tape your mouth and just run it like whatever your slow pace is and just see how that feels because it's harder. But what's happening is your body's not going to feel sore afterwards because your body's going to stay in a calmer state mm. and your body's not going to, your, your, yeah, your muscles are definitely not going to hurt as much after. Um, and you're going to increase your tolerance to carbon dioxide because when you start getting hot and it starts getting like a lot and you're like, oh, I really want to take a big mouth breath in your body is, your blood is like pumping itself filled with, C with carbon dioxide, which is the thing that tells your body you need to breathe. So if you can slowly increase your tolerance to that by running short, like um, really slowly, just nose breathing, mm. with time you'll notice that you need to, when you start going in through the nose, out of the mouth, you won't have to switch over to mouth breathing as quickly mm, because your body longer. will feel yeah. safer with the increased amount of carbon dioxide mm. like nathan can run like i think five or six k's fast really? nose breathing only he could probably do more because he's a machine yeah. but he um 
and my friend Jai as well, one of my best friends is a PT and she's been training herself to, we both want to try and do a nose breathing only marathon. <laughs> yeah, that's our goal. But I, I don't know if it's going to be possible with how small my nostrils are. Because yeah. even when I t nasal um, strip them, they're still tiny, but that's like our goal. But she can do uh, like 11 Ks, Ks. Yeah. at like six and a half yeah. minutes, um, only nose breathing, like only nose breathing. She's a boss. What can she do without nose breathing then? She can fly. Yeah, she can do quite well. Yeah. I don't know what she, I've, she only does nose breathing only runs now. That's crazy. I can't imagine doing a marathon with only nose breathing. We should try it. But how do you get, you need to get su like um, food in and stuff throughout the run. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. Mm. Maybe we try a half marathon because you wouldn't need to do anything during a half marathon. Yeah, you just, yeah, true. Because you wouldn't feel as dehydrated because you'd be, be mouth, you wouldn't be mouth breathing. <laughs> but what about the electrolytes? Half you marathon, losing? you don't need electrolytes. You'll be right. I did a half marathon. I didn't have electrolytes. There you go. There you go. I was mouth uh, breathing the whole time. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I'll cheer you on from the sidelines. <laughs> you can be there with electrolytes. Yeah. <laughs> what about like, you know, in, in sport as well, you mentioned like Nathan takes classes, which are kind of like mindset based, like visualization, that kind of thing. How, how is, have you seen kind of breath work being helpful? I've seen a lot with like the AFL and, and AFL clubs. What's kind of so what the out? performance class is is there's the visualization visualizations in the breath holds, but also he it's all about your carbon dioxide tolerance. Like your carbon dioxide tolerance is how many breaths you need to take per minute. And once you start mouth breathing and your diaphragm gets fatigued, your diaphragm is so much more important than anything else because that's the thing keeping you alive, right? Your heart and your diaphragm. But like mm. your diaphragm is your how you breathe. So your diaphragm starts taking blood from your legs and from your arms. So you're not performing as well once you start mouth breathing because they don't, your nervous system doesn't know you're playing a game of footy and it's super important and there's thousands of people watching you. Your nervous mm. system just thinks, oh, you're fatigued. You're not, you're not functioning very well right now. Let me quickly um, start drawing leg, blood from your legs and like making sure that your diaphragm's okay. Mm. So when you're, in, when you're taking less breaths per minute and being able to stay nose breathing for longer when you're under a high metabolic demand, mm. your diaphragm performs better, which means that you don't start to fatigue. You don't hit a wall. He calls it hitting a wall. Mm. Um, when he does the footy boys, he's like, we're doing this because we don't want to hit the wall or whatever. Um, so basically what performance <laughs> classes are is they're just like extending their exhales to make it really uncomfortable so that their body starts feeling safer in that state and their, their blood starts getting used to that state, if that makes sense. Mm. So like they're doing longer breath holds and then they're really extending their exhale to an uncomfortable uncomfortable length mm. so that they're, like, they're, they're getting that really hectic air hunger to then take that breath in. There'd be some long breath holds there, I'd imagine, or exhales, because yeah. they'd yeah. all be competing against each other. 100%. <laughs> There's like those two or three boys that come to class who I've banned from doing long breath holds because they, they just go for too long and then they like, yeah, it's just, it's not start it. Start shaking. And <laughs> they do, they start shaking because their bodies forget to breathe. So they, they go into like a sh shock state that they don't remember. <laughs> the other day we had a, a, I don't know who it was, I think it was maybe... I don't know if what class, it was one of the teams. Um, they're younger boys in, and one of the boys had his first ever breathwork experience, and he went into a breath hold, and he was like smiling the whole time. Like I was watching him thinking, you're having the best time, but then he went into a breath hold, and he doesn't remember this, but halfway through the breath hold, he goes, ah, fuck, and he like starts holding on for stuff. Like literally, he's trying to hold, trying to hold and I had to go Freeze, over and like, mate. I had to go over and like calm, and he was fine, like he was having the best time yeah, ever, yeah. but he doesn't remember. And he's really? like, and all the other boys had to stop themselves from laughing and it was like his first time in a long breath hold and he just like could not believe the sensations in his body and he just went to another dimension <laughs> and literally screamed out <laughs> and it was yeah it was great that's gold yeah well this like uh, you always mention at the start of classes like let let yourself go so you know be open to like the emotions that come through whether that's giggling happiness like sadness tears mm. do you is that is, does that happen a lot in, in a lot breath classes a lot in breath classes a lot of tears, a lot of tears but yeah. also like a lot of laughter but basically like the sensations that come up in your body, sometimes they're uncomfortable. Like you've done a breath class, like sometimes it's not the nicest thing to sit through, but my, it's like, okay, we never sit in uncomfortable things. Like we don't ever just sit in, if our bodies start to have a headache, not many people just go and have like four glasses of water. It's straight to like a tablet, right? Mm. And we're not used to sitting and listening to what our body is bringing forward. So whether it's emotions or whether it's like physical sensations or like people come in and at the end of class they're like oh i had surgery here and it was feeling like really tingly and i'm like you're healing yourself your body you're just staying still and you're just breathing and your body is just being like cool this is where it needs attention right but then yeah you do you have laughing fits you have like sometimes people have real big cries sometimes like i'll explain this actually mm -hmm. the word emotion is energy in motion 
And you can intuitively feel if someone has a good or a bad vibe, right? You don't necessarily always feel everyone's vibe, but you know when you walk into a room and you're like, oh, that person ain't it. Or like, that person's got fucking great energy, right? The word emotion, energy and motion. There's people who are led to believe, well, I believe this, but there's people, there's no science behind this because you can't put science to it. Mm. But people have um, come up with the opinion that your emotions are stored in your energy field, right? And when you lay down and breathe, you're, when you breathe with enough intention and it's moving your body and it's not those tiny breaths just into your chest, you're shaking everything up in your field. Mm. So sometimes you just want to giggle and you don't know why. Or sometimes you just want to have some tears come out and you can't intellectualize it because it's like, your body's just not had this emotional response, right? Because you know how you can't always, you're in public, someone's wanting to make you punch someone in the face and you can't necessarily have that emotional reaction at the time because mm. it's like not appropriate. Yeah. But you felt that heat inside your body where you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> or you want to cry because someone's made you upset, but again, not appropriate. So your body's had that chemical reaction because you felt it. You've moved past it, mm. but it's still in there. So when you lay down and you just breathe, you just shed the things that are in your body that you need to let go of. And sometimes it's like your body's not going to have an emotional experience if you're not open to it. Like if your ego's too there, you'll just have a vibey experience because that's just your body's never going to have an experience that you don't want to have, right? Mm. So some people don't. Some people just have straight vibes. And then sometimes, you know, like 10 classes in and they finally relax into it and they lose that part of their mind that tells them that they can't have it. And then they'll have like that cathartic release. But... Those people just have vibe classes, but then some people lie down and they're like, okay, I'm ready to surrender. I'm not scared. Mm. I'm ready to be vulnerable with myself. And they have laughter or they have tears or they have like just immense gratitude. Mm. Yeah, I definitely felt the gratitude. You just have to get in there and just completely open yourself up mm. to it, don't you? Just and have no expectations. Have no expect. Just it is what it is. It feels like a little bit airy fairy at the start, but then like you'll get so much out but of then it. Then Jay Z can... comes on and you're like, oh, and what? Yeah, shit, yeah, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> if, if you could give yourself like one piece of advice, um, or give anyone one piece of advice, or so just starting out breath work, what do you think it'd be? Just use your nose to breathe, <laughs> unless you're doing an intentional mouth breathing practice, or like you're bracing to train or something at the gym. Use your nose and tape your mouth, but no one's probably going to do that. (laughs) Um, Honestly, just get comfortable getting uncomfortable. And if something makes you feel like a little bit nervous, but you know that you'll probably evolve into it, just rip the Band-Aid off and try it because it's not as scary as you think it is. Mm. And if you really feel uncomfortable, try a YouTube video. Like, just lay in your bed. Like, don't have, you know, have no expectation about it. Just lay down and just go, okay, cool, let's go. Mm. You know, and just see what it's going to do because... We pay so much attention to the steps we take, the water we drink, the food we consume, you know, the sleep we get, all of that kind of stuff. But there's people out there who have never taken a deep belly breath or use their mouths to breathe, but are worried about all this other stuff. And it's like, your breath is your life force. You can't, some people can go a few minutes without breathing, but you can't go a minute without breathing unless you've trained yourself to, and you're not even looking at it as a tool. You're just like, I breathe, like that's airy fairy. But it's like, it's not actually, Mm. it's your, our nervous system, this is a good actual little tiny story. Wim Hof, the magical Wim Hof, um, when he, I don't know when in his, I guess, career, he um, stepped into doing this, but he wanted to prove that our autonomic nervous system is not automatic. It's actually, we have conscious control over parts of it with, with our breath. Mm-hmm. And he went to these group of scientists and all like, I don't know, researchers and said, I can control my innate immune response with my breath. And they were like, no, you can't. And then he's like, yeah, I can, let's go. And he got injected with E. coli and enough E. coli to make you really sick, like to be vomiting, oh, all that kind of this, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. With his breath and his mind, he controlled his immune response. So he got linked up with everything, had everything on, and then they looked at him and went, you're superhuman, no one can do this. Yeah. And then he turned around and went, everyone can do this if they are empowered and understand it. So he got like 20 test subjects or 30 test subjects, took 16 of them to a camp. They gave him a month to train them. They did it in like 10 days, flew them back. Every single one of them controlled their innate immune response. And then the scientists were like, okay, we have to rewrite all of these textbooks and Mm. say that it's not our autonomic nervous system. We can control it, but obviously that's not going to happen. No, too hard. Too hard, (laughs) basket. So like, they just are like, you're superhuman and like, we'll just keep calling this magic. So I I guess that's the answer to like, um, what do you do if you're a professional at breath work? Then start injecting yourself with E. coli and just breathe through it. (laughs) That's the ticket. Yeah, that, there you go. Maybe we'll do that's next for the breath house. Yeah, yeah. We'll try. Maybe we get Nathan to do that one. He's better at controlling. Yeah, his mind. Nate's got that one covered. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, mate. Take one for the team. Yeah, <laughs> you've got this one, big yeah. fella. What about like? How can people get involved? Um, 
not only you know at home but obviously like through the breath house as well so we have classes we run so many classes and i could be biased but i think they're pretty magical they're elite. um and the lsd class is probably the most suited to a beginner because it is only nose breathing so it's completely it's grounding it's completely mm. an in your body experience it's not taking you into that sympathetic state it's just bring keeping you in your body completely um, and that is, I guess, the most delicious starter for anyone who wants to like just try it, but then maybe nervous, um, or just like look up a YouTube video and just try it, or just like see what it feels like to stop and breathe into your belly for one song. Just put on one song that you like and sit down or lie down and just see what it feels like for that one song to fight your mind every time your mind tells you that there's something more important to do and just be present with your breath and see how you feel mm. when you just breathe. Just let it happen. Yeah. The, the breath house has been incredible for me, and you guys are doing such good things. It's uh, it's so cool to see. Um, it's very exciting. It's really exciting. What about where can people go find you on, on the socials? I'm the breath boss, and our business is the breath house Fantastic. underscore breath house underscore because someone who's oh, never posted anything has the breath house. Have you offered them a bit of coin? So We've offered come them on. everything. We're, Come on, we're, mate. we're getting we're getting our name trademarked so that okay. we can write to Instagram and be like, hello, this hello. is us now. Excuse me, yeah. get that blue tick as well. So, yeah, there we go. Um, but yeah, breath breath boss and breath house is awesome. where you can find us. You're doing great stuff. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks Ella. for having me. Good stuff. Thanks for listening, everyone. See you next time. Bye.